Okay. So um, we'll just let Derek jump in when he gets here. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today, I wanted to check up on you and see how you were doing. If you utilized any of the methods that we talked about last week, I mean, two weeks ago, and if you utilized any of those methods, which method did you use and how are you, what did you do? How did you work out? So let's start with Kayla. I know Kayla, you told me that you had decluttered a lot of things. Um, what method did you use and how did you feel during and afterwards? So, um, I don't have my notes with me right now. You wrote so notes? Yeah. That's what as she's far as the methods. So I don't know which method I would call it, but I kind of just like set out some time and just got rid of stuff with the clothes. I got rid of a lot of clothes and with some of the clothes that I was questionable about, I had to try it on and like see if it was like, oh, I actually still will wear this. Or if it was like, girl, no, you playing, just throw it away. So um, I, I tried that and got rid of like a lot of stuff. I tried to give away some clothes and that didn't work out like I planned. Okay. It'd be helpful, but she couldn't fit it. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> So, um, that was that, and then, yeah, so I just kind of set, set up some time, and then I've, like, I've sent pictures to people, like, oh, do you want this, do you want this, with, like, some little furniture stuff that I have, because I'd rather just give it away to a person than kind right. of just tossing it, so I've set up some things for some people to come pick up some stuff, if you haven't done it yet. Good. So how did you feel once you started to get rid of the stuff? I was like, oh, that was easy. I guess I thought it was just going to be way harder because, you know, I'd be liking to hold on to stuff. And I was like, wow, once I got into it, I was like, okay, I can do this. Okay. What about you, Kara? Did you take any of the methods and process along with anything? So I started with um, the 10-minute method with the clothes because it was the easiest. Um, not the easiest, but I, like I was actually in that room. Okay. And um, so I got a lot of rid of in my closet and in my drawers. And I realized I don't have a lot of quality clothes. Like I feel like all my clothes are now leaving because <laughs> I don't buy. So <laughs> it's been worn a lot. Um, but then I got really overwhelmed because. Okay, go watch TV. Okay. Um, I got really overwhelmed because there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. um so I've done a little bit but yesterday we um kind of started organizing the kids rooms and like Addie's room and that was a huge thing and then we just so we did, like got rid of a lot of stuff in their rooms and their toys and stuff and then today we did mostly in the kitchen getting rid of papers that I've just held on to so kind of made it more like a family thing instead of Good. just me trying to do it all by myself, which was okay. overwhelming. And then it just kind of flowed into that yesterday and flowed into that today. Well, that's so, good. I mean, yeah. you can, so you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to do it all at once. So it yeah. can get a bit overwhelming. That's why using that 10 minutes a day, just do what you can do within that 10 minutes and then stop. Yeah. Don't let it overwhelm you as in, oh, I have so much to do. I have so much left. Just take your 10 minutes, do what you can and do in 10 minutes, and then do what you can do 10 minutes the next day. But I do like that you got, now you didn't mention their names, but I do like you that you got Ben and the family yeah. involved because it becomes a family thing. And if everybody helps to get rid of, then everybody will be more wary of cluttering it up again. Yeah. So if you were just to do it all by yourself without having everybody involved, it would definitely get done. But then yeah. they have no motivation to keep it the way it is because they basically did it, nothing. They walked in and it was just done. Yeah. Including all of them makes it yeah. a family ben, oriented. Ben usually does focus on the kids room, but this time he's like, let's get the kids to do it. But that was very rough. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Three hours later. Um, yeah, and so they 
Henry did a great job and Addie tried to do it, but I think she kind of missed it a little bit. So we went in there and worked with them at the end. Okay. And it helped more, I think, seeing, you know, they were okay to get rid of some stuff. Do you play with this? What does it even go to? And they were able to answer those questions and put stuff in the right spot. So we're trying to teach them that. It's just really hard. Okay. One step at a time. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Derek. How are you? Derek, you want to unmute Hello, yourself? Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you? So we were talking a little bit about what we've been doing for the last two weeks within decluttering. And so each person was going through and talking about some things that they decluttered. So what have you done in the last couple of weeks that you would like to mention? Decluttered all clothes. I only have clothes that I wear and or can fit. And um, so I, that phase is done the the clothes phase is done okay. so um one thing i do find as a problem after i um corral the item i want to dictate how it's used as it moves on but you, you can't do that's that a, yeah it's a stumbling block for me it's and because it has value to me does not mean that it has value to other people it might actually be worthless to other people but so you just have to let let it, the item go and if a person finds value so be it if they don't but the point is it's, it's no longer your item they own it and they can do with it as they please absolutely absolutely and i know we talked about that a lot within the last couple of weeks of how you can't determine how somebody else will use your item. And when you give it to them, you have to give it to them and let it go completely. Because if you sit and worry about how they're gonna use the item or what they're gonna to do to it, you've let go of the physical idol, but all you've done is add mental clutter to your head. And you don't wanna let go of the physical just to add mental clutter. It's not worth it. Okay, good. So as for me, for the last couple of weeks, I haven't really decluttered much. As we know, I've been a little bit busy with my grandma dying and passing away um, and preparing her funeral and all of those things like that. So, but one thing I did do within that is that my aunt brought up a lot of photo albums because we were going through photos to look at to put on a slideshow or to maybe put on a poster board and something like that so what i started to do was take all of the photo albums and scan the pictures so i'm going to create like a digi digital website for my family so that they can go in look at the pictures download them if they want them so I'm, I'm getting rid of that physical clutter of some books that was just sitting in somebody's house for years and now digitizing it and making it so that everybody can enjoy it okay all right, so I want to get started today. I want to um, ask, I want to play a little game and you can think about these in your head and I want a response from everybody. If you're able, I would like to, for you to type your answers in the chat box if you're able. So just listen, write down the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word clutter. Can we tap, type that in the chat, chat box? The first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word clutter. Okay. So now let's write down the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word declutter. Okay. Okay. So now let's think about write down the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word minimalism. Okay. So some of our answers that we can see, um, getting rid of stuff, messy, clean space, junk, um, bare bones. 
a lot of these responses that we have, and the reason why I did this little um, game is because a lot of times when we think about clutter, we think about physical clutter, just what's in your physical space, what you can touch. Um, we tend to focus only on the physical when we are dealing with decluttering. But there are many ways that you, many different ways to declutter. Of course, you have your physical declutter in your home, in your space. You have mental declutter. I mentioned that a little bit when, when I was talking with Derek and talking about how if you give away stuff and you hold on to what's going to happen to the stuff, that's just mental declutter. Mental clutter. You have emotional, de emotional decluttering, getting rid of um, feelings and emotions that may come with the clutter, but also may come with different situations in your life. And then we're going to, we'll, we're going to talk about today is digital declutter. Okay. So oftentimes when we are decluttering, we're only thinking about those physical aspects of our lives. How many clothes do I have? How many shoes do I have? What books do I have? How much kitchenware do I have? And yes, that's an important thing to the clutter. But in the age that we are living in now, we usually have a lot of digital declutter. And the thing about I mean, digital clutter, and the thing about digital clutter is oftentimes it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Because you're not physically looking at it, it doesn't matter that you have 200,000 pictures on your computer or it doesn't matter that you have 5,000 unread emails because these things aren't actually taking up space within your physical, therefore you don't think about it. But when you go to, let's think about that person who has 5,000 emails, what happens when you go to read your emails and you get all frustrated because you have so many emails to go through and you need to find that one email from the Photoshop so that you can pick up your pictures, but you can't find it because you have so many different things to go through. So today I'm going to focus on four types of digital declutter, okay? I'm going to type this in the four types of digital clutter. Okay, so the first type I'm going to talk about is email. The second will be photos and apps. The third will be social media and entertainment and then the fourth will be notifications okay so how do how how are we dealing with these types of digital clutter how is each person how do you feel about this digital clutter do you usually have a lot of digital clutter are you pretty clean with your clutter um let's start with derek how are you with digital clutter Email, I, I tend to, um, particularly, especially at work, I think people, too many people compete for your attention via email. And I think a lot of that is unnecessary. So I try to, to address the things that are important and it, I just stop. I, I think it's just overwhelming and okay. I do what I can and I stop, but, uh, it, it's a system that's misused. It's just misused. Photos, um, I did early on when we went digital have a concern about that. I, I think it's good for people and future generations to find stuff that might not necessarily be the case with digital photos, but I've accepted it. It, you, it, it is what it is, and uh, we're not going back to, matter of fact, I gave away my dark room, my equipment to some artists and let uh, someone my son knew, let it go. We're not going back. Um, social media, I minimize that. I only post maybe food and notifications. You just turn them off. But I, I, this can, digital clutter can be overwhelming if you let it and, and you don't manage. But most of us work in IT and we can come up with programmatic solutions to address the problem. So those are my thoughts. Okay. Okay. I see you moving around. Did you want to speak now or you want Kara to go Kara. first? I can go. Okay. I'm usually pretty good with everything except for pictures. I'm like a picture hoarder with my phone. Okay. And but you show me that app, so we're gonna talk I'm about that to help you get yeah. But other than that, yeah, I just I keep all the pictures and it's way it's, it's 
it's ridiculous. Like it's the only thing that takes up a lot of storage in my phone. Okay. What about you, Carol? Um, I may have twenty two thousand emails in my regular <laughs> email and I'm sure work is not any different if we're going to be honest about it um yeah and I know we have a lot of photos we try to go through them I think we're going to like that's a step Ben wants to take to go through the photos because we're moving it to like a server or something because we almost okay. lost them before and um social media I don't really have a problem with that yeah you I don't have social media so <laughs> Uh, note, I think like the apps though, um, like on your phone apps, like I have a lot of them. I don't even know where they, I guess my phone and Ben's phone are kind of synced. So whatever he downloads comes on my phone. So I have all these apps that I have no idea okay. what they are. So I probably should go through those and shut those down. Okay. So we're going to talk about some ways to get rid of some of those. Okay. So first let's talk about email. A lot of us says we have a lot of emails. I know Kayla's like very efficient with her email and her work and her scheduling and things like that, but that cannot be all of us. So like you said, you have 22,000 emails. <laughs> that, that's a lot. Uh, the first thing that I would recommend for trying to declutter your emails is to unsubscribe from all of those emails that don't add value. I'm sure those 22,000 emails that you may have or like the, I think I've gotten my email down to maybe 600 in my, in my inbox, which came from like 12 to 14,000. But just by going through and like sorting your emails by sender and deleting a lot of those emails that you know, like you don't need that email that you got from Old Navy in 2015. You're, you're really not going to do anything with that that yes caleb so what i recommend is just go through the list and unsubscribe from any emails that you that, that's considered junk that you know you're not going to use and I, there's this app called unroll me and what it will do is you'll have to sign up for it and you give it your email address but then it'll look through your email mailbox and it'll ask you is this junk do you want to keep it do you want to roll it up when it rolls it up, it basically takes all the emails and put it in a folder and gives you like a daily digest of the emails. And then sometimes it will go through and unsubscribe the email for you. But if you're looking at the email and you go to the bottom of the email, there's usually a link that says unsubscribe. And you don't have to do it all at once, but as you're going through your email and the email pop up, think to yourself, when the heck did I sign up for this? or why did I sign up for it? Or, or is the reason that I signed up for it is that giving me value at this time? You know what I'm saying? So maybe back when I was really into photography, because I've gotten away from photography a little bit, but maybe when I was really into photography, I was getting emails from all these wedding photographers. I was on all of these lists and they were really bringing value to my life because I would sit there and I would read them, but now not so much. So why don't I go ahead as I'm going through, I can group it by, let's say I get something from Mike and Dave photography. I can go ahead and sort my email to grab all of those Mike and Dave photography, unsubscribe from the first one and go ahead and delete the rest of them. It'll take some process, but it'll take some time, but the process of going through and unsubscribing and deleting from them would be really good. And for your emails that you can't necessarily get rid of or can't necessarily delete. So let's talk about work. Why, why not create a filter to organize the mailbox? So Microsoft, off, a lot of us use Microsoft Outlook at work. If you don't and use something else, each mail, each um, application that you use should have a filter. And you can go in and you can filter those emails into a separate folder. So let's say you, you get a lot of emails from, Kara, I'm going to speak your language. Let's say you get a lot of emails from PC services that you really don't need. Or no, let's say you get a lot of emails from OSA. 
we really don't need those emails. They're just informational. Go ahead and create a filter and have the filter, have the email application do all the work and filter those emails out. Like I have, I have a filter for OSA. I have a filter for Desi Heads Up. I have a filter for a lot of things. Don't create a filter for something that you may need and then can't find because I've looked for emails from the executives and I'm like, this didn't come to my mailbox. This didn't come to my mailbox. That's because I put it in a filter. And so when I went back to look for it, I was like, oh yeah, I missed it because it was, I, I had sent it someplace else. But if you know it's something that you don't need or like what Derek said, you have a lot of people sending emails through, they just want to get your time and your attention, but they're really not saying anything. Let's go ahead and create, create those filters. Maybe keep the email for a couple of days, but then if you find that you don't need it, then get rid of it. And I'm not just talking about at work. I know we have capstone at work, so we don't delete as much as we can. But in your personal email box, go ahead and create those filters so that if you know every day you have something coming from your rental, every, every month you have something coming from your rental company, go ahead and filter that out so that you know and you have it sitting there that this is from my rental company if I need to go back in. That way you may, can you can even choose to and filter out all of the important things that you know that you need so that you can go through your mailbox when it's full of unimportant things and just start getting rid of it. Any questions on that? Any thoughts? No? Okay. So let's talk about number I, I have a yes. comment. Google, and I read this from Google, maybe a book or something. Th their thing is don't worry about a storage system for email because they say search out and people may disagree with that. They say just search for what you want and um, don't go through the time of organizing email per se, but that's that's just their way. It's, it's hard to resist attempting to organize it, but. But, but do you really need all that clutter? Just so that if, I mean, if I have 20,000 emails, yeah, I can search for what I want, but why am I keeping 20,000 emails? And oftentimes emails have, email boxes has limits to it. A lot of people don't have unlimited email. I know that Google gives you, like, let's say if you have a Gmail account, they give you 15 gigabytes if you don't purchase for something else. But that 15 gigabytes can, has your emails, it has your drive storage box, it has your photos. If you could limit the number of emails that you have that, to the ones that you are really lose, using, why just hold on to everything? I agree. It's it, it's you, you you always want to reduce the amount incoming, but it it's just another option. You can just um, filter them, or like you said, as soon as you can, just get rid of what you can right. and so automate I, it as much as possible. Automate it as much as possible. I do agree with the filtering because the filtering will allow you either to filter out the important stuff or filter out the unimportant stuff, whichever way you want to use the filter. And then that will help you to clean up your mailbox. But not everybody uses G Google. Not everybody uses Google. So you can't, so that may work for them. But let's say I use, have a Yahoo account who doesn't have that same capability. So that Google method is not going to work for me because that's not what I use. Okay. So... Number two that we're going to talk about is photos and apps. So most of our photo, most of our phones hold one thing, photos, a lot of photos. And oftentimes, if you are a big picture taker, or if you take a picture of a lot of things, let's say you're taking a selfie. I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I'm going to speak for myself. That one selfie that I posted on Instagram, I may have taken 12 to 14 selfies in order to get that one picture that I want to post. So let's think about, so you kept that one picture. You got that one picture that's great. Why do you have all 14 others with your eyes crossed this way or you're not smiling properly or just other ones that look crazy? Why do you still hold on to them? Oftentimes we keep those because we just don't have to get rid of them. That's not necessary because we have the space on our phone but we need to think about decluttering those. So I like to think that when I say um, 
when I talk about photos and Kayla mentioned it, the way that I manage my photos is, is that I upload my photos to two systems, uh, Google Photos. I have a Google account and they have an app called Photos and they have unlimited photo storage as long as you use the size that they store. So let's say you take a photo in that's 22 gigabytes, I mean, 22 megabytes of a picture and you upload it to Google. If you want to save that 22 megabyte photo, it's going to subtract from your uh, amount of storage. But let's say if you just upload a large size of that photo and it may be one or two megabytes, they have unlimited storage for that. If you have an Amazon Prime account, Amazon Photos has unlimited storage of any size as long as it's a photo now when it comes to videos they charge you um you have to you have a certain amount of storage i think it's five gigabytes for videos and then you have to pay for extra but for photos it's unlimited so like all of my photography photos from when i was shooting weddings and all of that stuff like that i have all of that backed up to amazon cloud so i've gotten it off of my computer it's not on my phone it's backed up and if i need to access it i can just pull it down from the cloud. So that's so a lot of a space, especially if you have an iPhone, a lot of space, you tend to run out of space in your iCloud storage because you have photos. Well, let's look at one of those apps that go either the, G, um, the Photos app or if you have Amazon Prime, the Amazon Prime app, or if you have Dropbox or anything like that. Let's look, up, look at something where you can upload your photos, keep them in the cloud, keep them backed up there so that you can decrease what's on your phone and declutter a lot of what's on your phone because a lot like i said a lot of it is photos but we also do have a lot of apps on our phone so i'm guilty of this i read about an app they say it's the best thing in the world i download it i don't use it but i download it because they say it's a good app i think i downloaded the i don't know maybe the calm app for meditation my mind moves too frequently for me to meditate. I know it's a process and I know you have to learn to do it, but I can't sit still for two minutes and just think my mind's gonna be clear because it doesn't work that way. But I downloaded the app, do I use it? No, so why is it still on my phone? So just think about a lot of the apps that you have downloaded. Have a conversation with yourself to ask, why did you download this app? And are you really gonna use that app? And I know you may have a lot of space on your phone, but it's just another thing to have to look through in order to find something. So if I like were to show you my phone, the, re the way I got through it was to, I don't know if you can see this, but I have everything in groups. So that's supposed to make it easier. But then if I open up this group right here, I may use two of those apps in there but it's 25 of them in there. Why do I still have them on my phone? So we may think about decluttering. I mean, it's not about how much space you have left on your phone. It's about thinking about what it is that you really need and if you really use it. Um, so have a conversation, conversation with yourself to determine if you really need that second or third or fourth photo app on your phone. Or do you, are you really going to look at that paint by numbers app that you may have on your phone? Just all of those different things like that that you downloaded that you may have used one or two times, say like you were on a trip and you were bored, so you downloaded something or like, hey, did you get rid of that, um, the app that we used on a cruise? Did you, is that still on your phone or did you get rid of it? No, I got rid of that. Okay, so mine is still on my phone. Because I'm my storage, it. because of the pictures. So my right. phone is like, oh, your storage is too much. So I'll be having to get rid of apps. Right. So like, but mine is still on my phone. Why is mine still on my phone? I'm not going to use it. I'm not interested in going on a carnival or cruise, especially not with COVID-19 out here. So just think about some of the things that you keep and why you keep it and if we can declutter them. But when you... But for your pictures, I really want you, because pictures are important, pictures are special, pictures are your memories. So really think about getting one of those free apps or even an external hard drive or something like that. Think about that to get those 
photos uploaded to those places. It may take a little while initially, but then they'll do like automatic backups as you open the app. So it won't be backing up all your photos at once. It'll only back up the photos that's changed since the last time you did it. And you can get rid of that, the cl that clutter on your phone and you can have it stored somewhere so that whenever you need to, and like if you keep the photo app on your phone, it works just like the gallery that's on your phone. Except when you're looking at it, you're looking at it from whatever your server you're looking at and you can always have access to the photo if you need it. Okay, any questions about apps and photos? Any comments? All right, so let's talk about social media and entertainment. There's some of us who don't do social media. Kara, good for you. Um, I don't social media much once I started minimalism. I don't do Instagram much. I do Instagram in order to um, listen to the man make um, voiceover for animals. So I don't, but I used to Instagram six times a day, at least, at least six times a day. Not really a big Facebook person. Actually, if you go, I actually got an email from one of my um, friends who retired saying, Tiffany, when I go on your page, I don't see anything. Did I do something wrong? I'm like, no, there's just not anything on my page anymore. That's something that I've decided to declutter and I don't use that. I keep it open so I can play my covet game, truth be told which is a fashion game on my phone. I only keep it open because I have to, ha don't, don't look at me like that, Kayla. I only keep it open because I have to have a Facebook account in order to play that. But other than that, I have nothing on there. I think recently I posted my grandmother's picture with her funeral information. After the funeral was over, I took it down. So, but there are some people who social media a lot. I don't think any of us do. Um, I think the four of us are very strategic, well, the three of us are very strategic to what we place up there. So I don't really think that that may be a problem, but I want to talk about the other portion of the social media, which, Derek, did you have something to say? I see you lighten up. No, my phone, the microphone was off mute. I just noticed it. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the entertainment portion. Now, entertainment is something different. So when we talk about entertainment, when it, I'm not just talking about your phones, I'm talking about your computers, I'm talking about different things like that. Let's look at uh, music or let's say you're listening to your phone or listening to some music or something like that. Is there a song that come on that you always skip past? That like if you have a rotation going on from your music library and you don't want to hear Barry Manilow sing Copacabana or something like that. And you always skip past that. Let's think to ourselves, why are you actually keeping that song? So I'm going to be a little bit different with my entertainment because I have the media server that I service everybody. So I keep all of my media. I keep all of my movies. I keep all of my um, music. I keep all of my TV shows because I know that, that those are things that other people listen to. But if that's not something that you're doing, so if you most of you enjoy my Plex. So let's say if I have Martin on my Plex and you only watch Martin on my Plex or you only watch um, Troll World, 2D World on my Plex or whatever, but you also have a copy sitting on your computer or you also have several copies sitting on your phone, why don't we think about decluttering that? Is that space that you really need? Is that something that you really need, especially if you're getting it from yourself? And when I think about music, a lot of music now, we use Spotify, um, YouTube music, Pandora. You're really not using your music that you have on your computer much anymore. So if you're not using it and you have these systems that will allow you to listen to this music, is there a reason that you may you you're keeping it for yourself, especially if you're not lose not using it? And this can go with physical movies too. Like, do you have a lot of DVDs but don't have a DVD player? Don't laugh. A lot of people have a lot of DVDs but don't. I know some people who still have um, Beta Max um, or have VHSs and don't have a VHS player. So why are you holding on to these things? Let's go ahead and get rid of it, especially if you can get your entertainment from somewhere else. Questions, comments, concerns? 
ideas, thoughts. This is supposed to be a conversation. I don't want to feel like a one-sided uh, teacher. I feel like I don't got much clutter that, like, in the, these ways that you're speaking of. So okay. that's why I don't have much to contribute. I did look at the... But you um, can't save extra pictures on your phone because of... You know what? Okay, that was the only thing. That was it. It was just the pictures. <laughs> and my grandma, she sent me Medea's Family Reunion to play on DVD. This was before you had uploaded it on Plex. I haven't even opened it, but I'm like, I feel bad if I throw it away. But why? It's, it's yours. Then we talk about things. Once, some, once somebody give it to you, it's yours. Don't throw it away. Take it someplace and give it to somebody else. Okay. That would be good. I'll do that. But there's no need. Are you going to do you have a DVD player? I'm going to play it on my laptop. I'm going to play it. Are you really going to stick that movie in your laptop and play it when you can I'm just not. open Plex and pull it right. up that's and watch it on Plex? <laughs> right. So that's something that you could get rid of. Yeah. And does and does Aunt Cookie even have to know that you got rid of it? She doesn't. If she it. say, have you watched it? Be like, yeah, I watched it. You watched it. It just was on I Plex. It wasn't it. on the DVD that she sent you. Okay. Sounds good. Kara? I don't know if I have much to contribute. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the The movies and stuff, you're right, I do use a lot of the apps like Netflix or the Plex or whatever. I don't really have movies on my phone. I know, um, like I said, our accounts are linked for the music and stuff. And so Ben listens to that music, but I mostly listen to like Pandora mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I don't really like have a lot of, you know, it would just Beyonce or whatever that I can jam out to every now and again. <laughs> you know, you got to jam out sometime. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's good. I, I, I really like that we don't have a lot of digital cl clutter. It will allow us to focus on the physical clutter that we have. But oftentimes we miss out on digital clutter as well. And that can be a big problem. But I'm glad that for the four, for the three of you, it's not a big issue. So the fourth and final thing that I'm gonna talk about is no phone notifications, okay? So I'm gonna make phone notifications short and simple. If there is something that you're trying to do less of, turn the phone notification off of it, from it. You don't need to know every time somebody likes a Facebook post. You don't need to know every time somebody put a comment on an Instagram post unless you are watching it for a specific reason. So if you are trying to limit your time on certain apps, just go ahead and turn the notifications off. Notifications can be nerve wracking, especially when you're so focused on something else and then that notification come through your phone. Oftentimes Caleb and I will be watching a movie and then a notification will come up from, I don't know, my bank saying that they'll close in 10 minutes. Like I really care if they're gonna close in 10 minutes while I'm sitting here watching a movie. But a way to declutter is to go ahead and turn off those notifications. Or if you do not feel comfortable completely turning off the notifications, you can customize when and how the notification will appear. Like let's say your emails, let's say you wanna be notified your emails. I do my emails, I think, twice a day every four to six hours that I'll have it pull an email and then a notification may come through. So you, if you don't feel comfortable completely turning off notifications, go ahead and customize what, how and when you will um, get the notification. Because I can bet if you were to go look on notifications on your phone from A to Z, everything's turned on. And you don't need that notification from the Photos app to let you know that they've created a great collage for you and go to look at it. So that was the four things that we talked about today for our digital clutter. We talked about email, decluttering emails. We talked about photos and apps. We talked about social media and entertainment, and we talked about notifications. So within the next week, I want you to think about the things that we talked about. I know that I said I would have the website up in a couple of weeks, but things happen. 
So I'm going to try to get it up as soon as possible. So if you need to go back and refresh yourself on some of the things that we talk about, it would be there. But other than that, that's really all that I have for you today. Does anybody have anything else that they wanted to talk about or speak on or what they're focused on or anything like that? No, 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 no. Okay, well, that's all I have for you today. <laughs> I thank you very much for joining this conversation and I will see you or speak with you next week. Bye. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.